you're able to be here. Um, we'll begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be out here this evening. And we just pray that your Holy Spirit will be with us. And please be with us as we learn uh, these health remedies and program here that this will be a ministry to those that are close by to us and that we'll be able to navigate through the challenging times of head. So we just thank you for your love and your care and be with us tonight as we uh, learn more about the, the hydrotherapy class. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to take an opportunity um, to let you know about um, all this equipment stuff here that we've worked hard to um, be as teaching aids and things, um, it, it costs money and a lot of us have put forth a lot of time, energy, and money to make this possible. And so we would like to give you the opportunity to kind of help pay it forward to those um, that could benefit from this as we are going to continue doing this takes funds and things for charcoal and for all these uh, pieces of equipment and things that you know we pass around uh, a little plate to and if you, you know, feel so inclined to give a donation we would much appreciate that to help keep the program going so thank you very much talk about graduation <laughs> We're looking forward to the graduation on Sunday, the 22nd. And uh, are you all getting the emails, by the way? How, how many of you are getting the emails every week? I'm not getting the Okay. So Ken does a great job of making almost like a newsletter for us. And so uh, anyway, uh, the details are in there. But anyway, 6, six o'clock on Sunday at the church, on the 22nd for the graduation, we have a special video we're going to show you and some information about things for the future. And so we'd like to just invite you to plan to be there. Anything else about we need to tell them? Well, all the requirements. OK. All right. So so uh, tonight, before you leave, we'd like you, uh, Ken, Ken at the end will read to us uh, the names of anyone who doesn't, on the record, show that you've done all your quizzes, have your check sheets for a year each time. If you haven't been here one time and you want to make that up, you can go online and see the video that you missed and then text me or Ken, letting us know that you saw it, the whole thing, and that you've reviewed it. And we will accept that for one of the classes if you missed one. But we really want to make sure that if you get a certificate, you've done, you've done the work and, and that's just reasonable. Because it's a hands-on program and uh, we, we want you to be able to have that advantage. So uh, he will read the names of those who aren't complete, and you come up and see him, maybe we have the record wrong, a mistake or whatever, or at least you'll know what we're looking for from you, and we'll help you figure out how to get it accomplished. We're here to help you get done, if you're uh, ready to do that. Okay, so that has to be done uh, by the Wednesday before graduation, which is you know, just a week from now. So we'll help you any way that we can. So I think that's it for now, and we'll look forward to this evening uh, Rebecca, are you up next? Yeah. So we'll go from here to Rebecca now. Dr. Evan. and it's by contact 
and you know, COVID could last several days or even weeks on hard surfaces. And uh, we, on the back, this is the symptoms and signs how it is. So then we have the mild symptoms, how it manifests. And you can have fever, cough, you have uh, shortness of breath, which is um, could be attributed to the low oxygen, which is hypoxemia. The critical is when you go down to the 80% oxygen saturation. And you have fatigue, you have muscle aches and body aches, headache, loss of taste. If you have loss of taste long time ago, then it wouldn't matter. Because this is a, a new loss of taste and sense of smell. Uh, here we have sore throat, you have congestion or runny nose, and you may have nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. And some people won't have any fever. Some people who want mild and immune response, they won't get fever at all. So, but they still get positive for the test. But some people. They have all the symptoms, but they have negative tests. So it all depends on the laboratory who runs the test. Uh, but the most uh, relevant finding should be the CT scan. If, uh, if it's negative, negative test, then you need a CT scan. That is when you really have shortness of breath. So when do you need to go see a doctor or have to go to the hospital? Sometimes, all these symptoms here are all like the most severe stage of COVID. So you have bluish now, you really have, you may have, because there's low oxygen, nothing goes in the brain, so at the late stage you can be confused. And you may not know when to ask help. And some people die alone at home, and that's the most sad part. So if we know somebody, we haven't heard from for a while. Uh, it's good to call them, check on them, what's happening, you know. People could die alone, that's the hard part. So, laundry, you know, any contaminated uh, material, clothing. Uh, as you know, the virus could die at high temperature. So laundry, you have to separate it from the regular laundry, you know. The contaminated clothes should be separately washed, high temperature. If it is a white colored um, material, it, you could add peroxide, what, what was what's that, the oxyclean? Bleach, yeah. Bleach. And uh, the cycle, the hot cycle, could also additionally kill the virus. So regarding protective, uh, personal protective equipment, um, if we have to take care of people and go to their houses, uh, we of course have to wear the personal protective equipment, which is PPE. And we assume that every surface in that house is contaminated. So I would advise if we go to the house, we should be wearing it already. Okay? So there is a way to put it on and a way to take it off. Uh, the gloves are your most contaminated part of your PPE, so that should go to a separate plastic bag, it should be discarded. But we have PPE, the one we have is washable. So you can put it in another plastic bag and you can wash that. But there's a way to put it on and take it off. I'll demonstrate it for now. Okay, uh, this is like going to a surgical suite. 
I usually do this. I know the procedure there is different. But I usually secure my head, my, my hair and everything. Uh, if you are wearing a mask that goes around your head and it's a tie-up instead of an ear loop, then you really have to put on your, your headgear and then put on your mask because then it should it should go around your go around your head and you, you tie it up like that. And then of course the virus could infect the mucous membrane that's including your eyes and your nose. So this is just to protect the eyes. Like that. But I won't wear this now because it's really hard to explain. So then I will do this. This is the washable um, surgical gown. It's just to protect yourself. And there's a tie around the neck.
Not all of them would be uh, useful for COVID. That's something we haven't really tried yet, so we have to do some experimenting, experimenting with it. Hydrotherapy was popularized. Notice that I said popularized and not started, because that there was hydrotherapy down through the ages, different degrees. But John Harvey Kellogg was a young man that actually lived in the Whites' home, and the Whites saw that this bright man, this bright mind, needed training, and they encouraged him to go to get trained. And Dr. Kellogg went to some of the best medical schools at the time, and he came back to work at established the Battle Creek Sanitarium, but before that he was working at the Western Health uh, Institute. That was right down there in Battle Creek. And as you can see, it was, it was kind of a big house, but it wasn't big enough for John Harvey Kellogg. He filled that place up real soon, and he decided that he was going to build a bigger and better place, just like the parable, you know, the farmer, he didn't have, wasn't big enough, so he got bigger and bigger barns. Well, John Harvey Kellogg actually filled up uh, the Battle Creek sand. Now, this is just one part of it. This thing is huge. It went on and on and on forever. It was a very big sanitarium very well equipped. It had uh, all treatment rooms, all kinds of patient rooms, a wonderful kitchen where they made the best food, and big lecture halls for John Harvey Kellogg to speak to the people. But unfortunately, it burned up, and we lost the Battle Creek Sanitarium to fire. But John Harvey Kellogg was not in town when this happened. And it is said that he got off the train with new plans in his hand of what he was going to do next with the, with the sanitarium. And a little fire didn't face him one bit because he was going to do it bigger and he was going to do it better, and he did. Battle Creek Sanitarium was a huge, huge um, building. It is still standing in Battle Creek today. It is now... Uh, highly, it's owned by the government and that it's in the defense area. I don't know exactly what they do in there, they don't, they don't tell you, but it's highly sensitive. You have to go through, get all kinds of uh, papers and passes in order to go in there. And I've had the privilege of going in there. Very elaborate, marble this, marble that, big drapes everywhere, high ceilings, very Victorian, very beautiful, very interesting. But in that sanitarium, they had all kinds of different treatment options. And they had the assistants that were trained to do it right. And um, Dr. Kellogg could just give a prescription of what he wanted. And they would do either massage, or they would do fomentations, or they would do baths, or they would do showers. Notice this squirting one down at the bottom there. That, uh, that's a really good one. They do that contrast, and um, it's, it's very, very good. Uh, the big picture on the right is actually light, and Kellogg did a lot with light. They had uh, light boxes. If you go to the little museum that they have there in Battle Creek now, they, the, the Avenues Village has a museum, and you can see some of the light boxes that they're actually from Kellogg time. And they were just, they weren't any kind of special bulbs. They were just plain bulbs. But oh, a lot of them in that those box, big box. And you sat in there, and then your head came out into the fresh air. And the rest of you would be in this, this big box. All kinds of things you can do with light and infrared light. It's, it's, that's a whole topic we're not going to be getting into. Here are the baths. You can see. Uh, how deep the bathtubs were. We don't have that kind of bathtub anymore. And it's, we can't do as good as they did back then. But we can do the best we can with what we have. And so that's what we try to do. Notice here how, how high it was. Notice the cold to his head, the pillow behind his head to keep him comfortable. 
and uh, they had all their. But then in 1918, the flu pandemic hit, not just the United States, but the whole world. In fact, it had said that it went around the world three times. When we say three times, it means it mutated. Every time it went around here, it came again, and people could get this flu again. And if it didn't kill you last time, it may kill you this time. Uh, it killed 1.3% of the world's population. An estimated 50 million people. Now that's a lot. How many are we up to now with the COVID? Does anybody know? Anybody? Should have looked that up today. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's not anywhere near 50 million. I'm sure about that. And the whole World War I only killed 16 million to give you an idea of the, the change. Within the first three months of the flu, it had already killed more people than any other disease recorded in history. It was very, very severe. It targeted young adults. Uh, in the morning, they could be out and be fine, and by nightfall, they could be dead. That's how quickly it acted, and it was a, a very dreaded disease everywhere in the world. But there are no deaths recorded at Battle Creek Sanitarium. They use fomentations, what we're going to be teaching tonight, and that was enough to keep all the patients that came to Battle Creek Sanitarium uh, safe. But not only Battle Creek, because by this time, there were other Seventh-day Adventist institutions that also knew the treatments, and they, could, they also were saved. I want to tell you the story of Paul Stuyvesant. Um, Paul Stuyvesant is the little red line there going to him. Paul Stuyvesant was my cousin's grandfather, and so this is a story that I heard from my, my own family. Paul Stuyvesant was trained as a nurse at the Hinsdale Sanitarium and Hospital. That's uh, Chicago area. Uh, same protocols that uh, Battle Creek Sanitarium had, so did Hinsdale. And so Paul Stuyvesant learned how to do all these treatments and many, many more. And he learned all the natural remedies. When he was done with his nursing degree, he went to Southern Junior College, which is right over here in College Dale. He moved to College Dale and to help build the new school there, which was called Southern Junior College at the time. And all the students were housed in tents that looked like that. They had no buildings but and, and no money, so they were just kind of building as they were prospered by the Lord. That winter, a cold uh, storm came through. They got 18 inches of snow. If you can imagine that down here, we, we don't have 18 inches of snow anywhere. But imagine that in a tent that was uh, really cold. And about then, he was also the school nurse for the men at the college. But the flu hit Southern. And students began coming down with the flu. Well, Paul was given a tent and an assistant. And these two were tirelessly giving fomentations. Um, not one student died at Southern Junior College, despite terrible living conditions and high mortality rate <coughs> everywhere. Well, he got done with Southern, and Oakwood was having uh, flu hit them. Oakwood College was hit hard by the flu epidemic, and Paul and his assistant traveled to Oakwood uh, that's in Huntsville, Alabama, and he gave treatments there. And again, God blessed, and there were no casualties. Uh, Paul and his assistant were such a team. Now, tonight you'll see how much work doing the fomentation is. If you could imagine doing it to 70 people a day, you know, that would be incredible. They worked together, but it was hard, hard work. So they worked long hours taking care of the sick. When they got Oakwood under control, no casualties there, he went back to College Dale, where it had come back. By now the outbreak had returned to College Dale, so Paul Stuyvesant and his assistant returned to College Dale. And it was during this time that Paul and his assistant contracted this flu. Paul recovered, but the assistant did not. 
And to his dying day, Paul Stuyvesant was broken hearted that he could save so many hundreds of people, but not his assistant. Mm -hmm. And he, even as an old man, he lived into his 90s, he would tell the story of the 1918 flu and how natural remedies were really, really important to saving so many people. But you can see not everybody is saved, even with the best of methods. If you are run down yourself, poor, poor assistant, you know, taking care of so many people, it's important for us to learn a lesson from that, that we need to be able to, to be temperate ourselves. Take all the precautions that Dr. Evans was talking about. Put on the, the, the mask, put on the PPE, put on everything because you don't want to contract something yourself and die from it. That's very important. So today we're going to talk about fomentations. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the theory and then you're going to see two different types of fomentations being given. And one group will start here and the other group will there and then we'll trade sides and so everybody can uh, see. Here are fomentations actually being done at Battle Creek. Notice the, the uniforms of the assistants, so they're kind of cute, aren't they? <laughs> um, so they, I guess they got really hot working or something, then, but uh, that's how they dressed. Now, if you were going to look up fomentation in the dictionary, you'd see quite an interesting uh, definition. It says, the action of instigating or stirring up undesirable sentimental actions. <laughs> well, we're going to adjust that to, to Actually, the action of instigating or stirring up white blood cells, those are the warriors in our body. That's what kills off all the bad guys. The white blood cells to full warfare in the body. So the heat and the cold that gives the best uh, warfare. And so instead of a poultice, we're going to redefine the poultice to be a moist, hot mass applied to the body part, the chest or some other part interspersed with contrast cold. And when I say cold, I mean ice water. So here's just a, a little summary statement. Thick fomentation cloths are heated in hot water, wrung out, covered with towels, blankets, placed under the back and on the chest of the patient while the patient's feet are placed in hot water. This is alternated with cold, wet cloths rubbed with fiction to the chest. This process repeated is, helps the patient's own body fight the flu or any other disease that we're working with. But we don't want to forget to pray. God is the great healer. And all these things, we just do simple things, you know. It has to be God who works through our hands, through our actions to work with not only the bodies of those we, we serve, but the hearts. And that's where we really are after. We're after the hearts for God's sake. Ellen White says in a beautiful statement in Medical Missionary 57, water treatments wisely and skillfully given may be the means of saving many lives. That's our promise, folks. That's why we do these things. Let diligent study be united with careful treatments let prayers of faith be offered by the bedside of the sick. Let the sick be encouraged to claim the promises of God for themselves. So, yes, we go do treatments. But let's always pray and make sure that uh, God is in control of our treatments. All right, so I'm going to talk about some of the fomentation options that we have these days. All right, we have, first of all, the, what we call the traditional um, augmentation. That is either a, a camel hair or a very thick kind of wool with a cotton batting inside, okay? Unfortunately, this old one got burned in a microwave. <laughs> and, but it makes for a great demonstration so that you can actually see what's inside of them. But I'm going to pass this around. You've already seen it, so I'll let you see. You can see what, what, how, the, how they're done. They're just simply big bags with uh, 
the black batting inside. Now, inside that, I mean, when you take that out, you need to have a wool cover that looks like this. And now, mine are actually camel, camel hair wool, too. This is a really nice, soft, soft fabric, and it doesn't itch. And so I was, these are super old. We've used them for years. But they are very helpful. You put the fomentation in the middle and then do it up. So they use that. Now, you can order these traditional ones. Chuck will tell you where later. I don't know where. You want to talk about that now or you can order them? So we, we did have a supply of them, but Sunday they all got taken. So, uh, but the lady that makes them for Uchi Pines in Wildwood, it lives in North Carolina. She's a real missionary lady. We worked together in Romania some years ago, and she is an expert at making them. And they cost between $25 and $30 a piece. So we figure $100 minimum for a set of four. And uh, it compares similar to the Russian steam bath. Uh, also about $100. We want both because they're different purposes we use them for. But it's an investment, but they'll last you the rest of your life. Well, and like I said, mine are very old. They're probably, oh, I'm not even going to tell you. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, old. Okay. Yeah. All right. If you, if you just let me see me afterwards and we can take your name down. I know several of you already said you'd like to order them and we'll work together getting them. Okay, so. That is one option of fomentation. By the way, we, we get so we love these fomentations and we have nicknames for them, so we call them foamies, okay? But here is another option for a foamy. This is something that uh, one of my friends just taught me. This is like flannel bed sheets that have been sewn together and in the center third, there's another piece of flannel sewn in the middle, okay? Then big X's, and then you would fold it up in thirds. That's why it's called a tri-fold. And then put it in your wool, your wool uh, cover. To heat it up, you just roll it like this and stick it in there. And I'll be talking about heating options in a, middle, mid, in a minute here. Now, if you don't have any bed sheets you want to use, here's another option, bath towel. And I, it, it's very, very simple what I did here. I just it took a big bath towel, took a hand towel, and sewed that down the middle. And so that also becomes a trifold. And the advantage to that kind of camel hair one that we sent around is it holds the heat the best. But some of these other ones do really well. It only has to be on the three to six minutes, and it will hold that heat for that long. And so then the best way to get this and some of the other ones wet is start it in your washing machine and then send it halfway through a spin cycle so that it's still wet but not dripping. And then you're not having to do these heavy, heavy towels and things. Let the, the machine do it for you. And again, so to put it in the, the steamer, you would put it in like that. Okay, so there's that's the terry towel trifle. Then another friend of mine told me about rice bags. Yeah. Rice bags are just what they are. They're just fabric with little bits of rice stuck in it. This is not super stuffed. If, it, if you put a lot of it in, it gets very thick, and then it's very heavy. But this will actually lay pretty flat on a person, and it's, it's very, you can get it hot in the microwave, four minutes in the microwave. And believe me, it's very hot. You have to put 
you have to put them in a towel or put plenty of towels down and it stays hot. Um, yesterday when we were doing it, the back one didn't even need changing at midway. It was that hot. So uh, these bags, anybody can make just plain cotton, brown rice in it. You can look at these for a sample. I have two of them here that uh, we'll be using this later this evening. And then somebody asked me yesterday, several people actually asked me about a thermophore. A thermophore is a heating, a special kind of heating pad made by Valcrete originally. But in time, um, it of course went out to another source. But they have what are called the classic thermophores, and they're long. They're very long, about like that. And this is the kind that you want if you're going to go with the thermophore. I would not recommend the thermophore unless there's no nothing else. Okay, it's not as good, but it is a good solution if you're by yourself and you need to give yourself a good treatment. So you would put one thermophore on the back, or maybe a rice bag on the back, and then you would use this thermophore on the front. And notice this um, this kind of switch. So that's the old-fashioned kind. The ones that are the new fashion are, have a little timer on them and they go through a 20-minute cycle and turn off. This is the kind you want. And when you're starting it, you start it first and you let it get really, really hot before you even put it on. And what I have on mine are some hair ties for your hair and rubber bands that I have it so it just stays on. Obviously, this is something you have to, you're not going to just leave on forever or you just start a fire in your house. <laughs> and that's why they have the new timed ones. But this is a perfect for doing a treatment on yourself. If you don't have somebody else to do a treatment on you, uh, this is an option. Okay, so now we are going to talk about how we get these things hot. Um, what you want, if you're going to use the traditional stove method, is a Sorry about that. Just came off. Okay, so you want a tall pot. Now, ideal would be a tamale cooker, because they're really high and they have steam on the bottom. And you can stand these things up. Now this one here is actually my Korean steaming pot. And it's it's a very nice pot for doing canning. I got it, we, were, we used to live in Korea. And so you put water in the bottom of this. And then you can stand your all your different uh, fomentations. And I usually put five in there and do the whole batch right at the beginning so they're all hot at the same time. Then it's a matter of just taking out a hot one when you're ready for it. Because I don't have a tamale one, this is my, my uh, invention. Okay, This is another canning top and it goes on this and it makes it high enough so that that uh, they can stand up. And I like standing them up versus a laying down system, but you can use a laying down system if you like. People use canners, people use any big pot that they can, but the idea is you want steam and you do not want these things down in the water because they can be very, very hot and can burn people that way. Mm -hmm. Yes? So are those already from your washing machine half wet? Yes. Yeah, so they are ready to be heated now. They're they're wet now. That towel one wasn't didn't go through, so that was dry. But the other one is wet. Now, lately, people have been using this electric turkey roaster, and that is. Thank you. This is this one, okay? And you'll see it fully demonstrated when, when uh, Chuck will demonstrate this. But the advantage to this is it's an electric thing that you can take to the bedside and it'll be right there and you're not having to run back and forth to your kitchen. So having it fully electric like that is a really nice thing. 
there is a steamer rack in the, uh, at the bottom of it so the water is there and it can steam without uh, getting your your thermophores all, I mean your compresses all wet, fermentations all wet. Okay, so that is that. Microwave and plastic bags, okay? So you can also just put them in a plastic bag and you can put them in the microwave. Uh, I usually put them in for four minutes or so. I, I do two minutes and then I turn them inside out. You take them out of the bag, turn them inside out, and do the other. Now, I didn't know about turning them inside out before, and that's why I have holes in my my nice, nice fomentation. So uh, take a lesson from a mistake made. All right, in your book, it talks about a boiling water method, and you can, I'll let you read it. It's, it, it has you taking a towel and twisting it, and then dipping, dipping the, the things into this boiling water, and just keep keeping it. And people that use it, they swear by it. Um, I, Terry Horner was telling me that in her, her daughter up in Nepal had no option but that method. We don't have, we don't have fancy turkey barn, we don't have microwaves, we don't have anything like that. So this is a method that you would use in a primitive situation. However, it is not my favorite, it is not something I would recommend to us here in this country because number one, it's easy to get burned, and number two, it's you know, you've got all this twisting and all that, it's, it's just a, 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 not as convenient. All right, now we're going to talk a little bit about the function of fomentations. It increases the number and circulation of white blood cells to help fight in infections more effectively. It helps remove body waste through the skin by sweating. It helps relieve pain in the nerves, muscles, joints, and internal organs. It helps relax your muscles. And it equalizes circulation through the body to relieve congestion of internal organs. So that is <coughs> some of the functions. Indications. What kinds of things would make you so you think you need a, a compress, I mean a fomentation? Chest congestion in colds or flu, bronchitis, pneumonia, asthma, pleurisy. In other words, all these things that happen in the chest are, <coughs> excuse me, are things that you would indicate that you need to have a fomentation on your chest. So colds, flu, bronchitis, pneumonia, asthma, and pleurisy. You might see some of these things in a little while in the test. So. Uh, listen up. <laughs> Improved function and healing of internal organs, pain and inflammation of muscles and joints, and to warm up a body part in pre pre preparation for massage. Now we actually have a massage therapist here, in, uh, Linda, or Linda, and uh, she, I know when I've had massages before, a uh, person has used something like a fomentation to heat up the, the area before doing the massage. So we have a relief of muscle spasms, relaxation of tight muscles. So these are all indications that are important to help you know that this is this would be a great treatment to try. Now, what is a contraindication? Contraindication says do not use this if so-and-so is present. So we want to see what is contra. Do not use it for cancer. Cancer has a, enough multiplication on its own without getting some heat and uh, causing more issues. So don't use it on cancer. Never, never, never use it on an unconscious person. Why? They can't tell you anything, you know. Always you need to be in communication with your patient. Is that too hot? 
is this is is your water too cold? Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So you're always talking to them. How is it feeling? Is your uh, can I add more hot water to your feet? Can I? Is this gonna? Is that burning you? Do I need to add another towel? So you're always talking to the person, and so it's very important not to work on somebody that can't tell you. Don't use it on appendicitis. Appendicitis, it is contraindicated. Now, precautions. Use only mild heat for diabetes and others with loss of feeling or numbness or with children who cannot express their feelings. Okay, a diabetic doesn't know in their extremities when they're cold or hot. They think, oh, that's not very hot. I can take it hotter, but oh man, it can cause major, major problems for a diabetic. So don't don't go above. You could just make it quite warm. You can still do it, but just don't make them hot. And what I used to do with my children on those things, instead of dipping them in water and letting them drip and spinning them through, I would just spray them with a spray bottle and then let that get, and the steam get it hot. And that was plenty hot for the kids. So I'm talking about small children here. You guys could take the road thing. You all. all right, so another thing to be very careful about is when you're done with the treatment, don't let the person just get up and walk around because they can catch cold and they can get worse. You don't want them to be worse after doing a treatment, after all that work. You want them to be careful and stay, not be chilled. All right, when you're adding hot water to the foot bath, you, you put their foot to the side and you put your own hand in there and pour very slowly, just a small stream. And all the time you're talking, you're swishing, and you're saying, how is that? Is that hot? I said, just remember that your hand can take much more than their feet. Uh, our hands are always in hot water. And the feet are very tender. And so just keep talking. Is this, is this about right? Does that sound good? And so always be careful when you're adding more hot water to the foot bath. When you're all done, make sure that you clean the equipment thoroughly to avoid spreading infection. Put items in the sunshine. All those things over there got washed today. I'm sure the Cleveland's washed all this too. It's just, you do, that's what you need to do. And that's why this is one of the, the most work intensive things, because you've got all these towels and all these things that you've got to wash and spray down and clean up. So. Um, just make sure, though, that you're not spreading germs from house to house. That would be not good. And do not use ice when doing cold massage if the patient is not vigorous enough to warm up. For instance, an old person, they're very thin, and just use plain tap water, cold. That's good enough. You don't need to, to use ice and do a vigorous thing because their skin is so tender anyway. It doesn't take anything to rip an uh, old person's skin. And so you definitely don't want to do that. I remember our pastor's wife up in Michigan went and gave uh, one of the ladies I was giving Bible studies to uh, a treatment. And she actually burned her arm, you know. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, <laughs> I felt really bad afterwards, but you know, Old people, they just, you have to be very, very tender with them and be, be very, very careful. Don't be, then here's an equipment checklist. Uh, you've got a list in your book. The only thing that maybe I would add to that list is a good pair of tongs, okay? And some nice, a, a, a nice water temperature thermometer, okay? This one is a good one. As soon as you open it, it turns on. If you close it, it turns off. It's got nice big letters for old eyes on mine, okay? This, this is a really nice time. 
This is also a OK one. This is a digital one also. Um, it's just for turkeys. And so any store doesn't have to be digital. It can just be an analog one. That will give you temperatures for when you're doing a hot bath. You don't want it over 104. So that's really important. Now this is the other thing I wanted to show you. These are actually cold mitten friction mitts. Okay. Notice there's no thumbs, no fingers in it. But it's very easy to, to do the, the cold mitten friction. You dip it in, you get it cold. And then when you think they're getting nice and warmed up, then you flip them over and then you can be cold all over again. Yeah. They're really nice and they're a simple thing to make. There's nothing to say that you have to have them, but they're really nice, those of you who sew and would like to put together a good kit there. So here's the preparation. We're going to show all of this, so I'm going to skip through this very quickly here. You want water 104 with towels under it. Notice how you very gingerly put the fomentation. Notice the stacks of the uh, covers on that and then you just set it on top and then when you roll it all up that maintains the heat in it before you just while you carry it to the room or you're putting it on the person. And here we are, notice the, the position, here's the ice bucket, feet there and notice he's putting it on, he's already put something on his back so he has a hot foot bath, hold to the head, ice basin, fomentations to chest and back. So you can um, have it. Now, a thin person, you, you only need one on the front. But if you have a hefty person, you really need to put one on top. And so you'd be using three, one on the back, one lower abdomen, one upper, okay? So it depends on the size of your fomentations and the size of the person as to how many you actually want to do. Notice when you drape them, you can carefully bring it over and tuck it in under the foot bath. Um, Chuck was showing me, and he'll show you that later if he has a special device there. I don't have such a device. I think that's really cool. All right, so you want to drape the person carefully. You don't want the air coming in because then you can get pneumonia worse and you just want to make sure they're very warm. You do it three to six times for three to six minutes each one. If you go for three minute intervals, that is much more vigorous because that's hot and then hot and then hot. Whereas if you go for the six minute time, then it starts off hot, but then it kind of cools down and keep the the foot hot, the feet hot, but you don't have to um, change it as much. And so it makes it a little more restful. And then finish with the cold mitten friction. And when you're all done, dry the person. Pour, I usually take the, the water, pour it over their feet, do the whole body now with the cold mitten friction so that they are completely in, and then dry them well and then get them into bed. Now, another thing that I have done usually in connection with fomentations is to put on the, uh, the strips of cloth, the compress, or you can use the nice jackets that we um, have been uh, using. I, I talked on that first night, well, the first night. I'm confused now. Yeah, first night it would have been. So, most important thing is to then rest. Okay, there, that person should not be getting up and running around, but it, that person needs to be under covers and get a good nap afterwards. You've, you've exhausted the body, now it's their time to rebuild. It's the, a part of the healing point uh, part is to try and give them time to recoup and so do the rest part. Don't just um, forget that part. That's one of the most important parts. So that is the basis of what we're going to be doing now. We've talked, talked, talked about it. Now we're going to, you're going to see, we're going to divide the group. So one group will go here first and one group will go here. We'll do different methods so you can see different things and ask your questions and all that while you're here.
you know. So um, we have them all fixed up just for a comfy, like a regular bed at home. And this is simulating like it would be if you were at home that you would have them fixed up uh, with a sheet over him and the, and the blanket because we always want to keep him warm. And uh, we also can use here on the feet for a little extra safety if this was the, the bed. If we're going to have his feet in water uh, in a few moments, I'm going to use this old, uh, what do you call these, pads, mm -hmm. protective pads. Look at that, he just knows exactly what to do. All right, good patient. He's a very well-trained patient. Very well-trained patient. I'm gonna keep his seat warm. So then, we're going to have, on the fomentation, we're gonna have his feet in hot water. What temperature did it say? 100 to 4. Now the range, when you're using the hot water, isn't always 100 to 4, but that's one that they recommended. We say not less than 100 and not more than 115. So there's a range in there. You can see how the people, how the person feels. I like to start more like 110 because it cools down pretty fast. And so 104, it's just minimum hot. And in five minutes later, you're busy, you're gonna to have to add more and you may not have time. So I would recommend just a little warmer. Our, our uh, tap water temperature from the kitchen is 113 generally. What I've noticed. So Phoebe's bringing some out, and we'll double check the temperature. Okay, thank you. So uh, these little thermometers, I noticed they're on sale right now. Uh, this came in the mail today, and you can get the one like this little one here for $19.99 instead of $39. At um, is this uh, Bed Bath and Beyond? But you can order them the same price online, and they're very handy. Just turn it on. We'll do a check here. So there it is. So right now it's looking at room temperature because that's just you know where it's at. But you put it in, and immediately it gives you your reading. We're at 106. Is that going to be good? That's going to work. Right. Okay. So we're going to go ahead now and uh, get his feet ready. That will be our first step. And I'm going to put this in. If you could lift your feet up and find a position here. All right. Now, I'm going to see. Uh, is that far enough for you? Up. Okay. I'll put this up just a little higher. Okay, and Phoebe's got some more of the same temperature water. We'll put it a little deeper because we're only a couple of inches. We'd like it a little bit deeper than that. So she'll add some. And since it's the same temperature, it won't really matter. Feels good, right? <laughs> like it should. All right, that's good. That's fine. Yeah. That's the little thing I made yesterday. Uh, I'm going to see if it puts the feet just a little closer together. Uh, is that too tight? Okay, very cooperative. Page. Just saves keeping the the sheet out of the uh, out of the water, so that makes it easy. Okay, so we got that much. Now, where do we need to put the fomentation next? Uh, yeah, uh -huh, the back. We'll start with the back because once he's down on that, then we're going to leave that for the rest of the time, and we'll rotate uh, the we do the three normally on the chest. So now. We're demonstrating two different methods, not methods, but two different materials that we use for fomentation. She mentioned that we have the traditional uh, fomentation, which is this one here. These are made by an Adventist sister in the Carolinas. She makes them for Uchi Pines and for Wildwood as well. And we found that they become pretty starchy feeling when you first get them, and they work much better if you wash them once or twice and just get them a little softer. Do you just wash them in the washing machine? Yeah. If the coals are hot, does it matter? Just to get the sizing out of it so it wouldn't matter probably. I put them in, but I didn't put as much soap as I normally would because all I had in there was those four things, so I just put a little bit of soap, but it made plenty. Would you fix this under his knees? We're going to put a towel, uh, uh, a 
pillow under the back of his knees just to give him a little support here. This is a Cadillac approach. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. That way he'll come back and be a patient again when we need him. I would not, if this was home, and, and he's a patient, or Stevie, and she's in bed, I would have already gotten all this ready, but um, for demonstration purposes, we're doing it right now. So I'm going to put this, I'll stand a little bit sideways this way so you can see. So I'm just going to immerse it in the water, and let it soak a little bit. Um, these are not the, because they're not as real, real pliable, it's, it's a bit of effort to wring it out, but it's certainly possible, at least for a man to wring it out, maybe the lady would be harder. The thing that uh, you want to be careful if you do put it in your, your wash machine and spin it, uh, just because it's convenient, the problem can be that you dry it too much in spinning it, and you don't develop the steam if you have a pretty dry fomentation. Also, they wear out quicker too because they, they can burn, they're not really dry. So I'm going to kind of fold this like this in half and over on itself. And I'm going to twist it to get the excess water out. Now you can see I'm not, I'm not able to twist it a lot, but it's not dripping either. So I'm happy with that. That's what I like. It's quite wet. Okay? So that's, so it's just, just all but dripping. Okay? Okay. That one, that will steam up nice. All right. And these are supposed to be wet. Pardon? These are supposed to be wet. This, is going to this, this will go in the microwave now uh, for, for five to six minutes. I, I roll it up loosely like this, and I lay it on the lip just to hold it. And we're going to put it in here, and we'll do a total of six all together. Now, while we're doing that, we would have done that ahead of time. Um, the disadvantage of the microwave is that you can, you can, you're limited to do one. Get it, get it done and take it and then start another one and wait on it, okay? And so you've got to, once you take one out, you should always have another one ready to put in there. If you don't, you're gonna get busy here. That one cools down and now you've got five more minutes to start over to wait for this to get hot. So whenever I take one out, I put another one right in to follow. That points out also, the advantage to having a cooker of some kind, we're using this little turkey baster, and you can see it's nice and hot, and, and, but, or it could be a canning kettle with a little bottom to keep the water below the rack. You don't want it to touch the material. And, and that way, and, and she showed you her kettle, she had that Korean one, and it was nice and tall. The advantage of that is you can put all of your fomentations in there ahead of time, and you're done chasing them. They're ready. You get them all ready at once. You're just simply coming and pulling one out when you need it. So that actually is an easier way to do it in, in certain, you know, certain advantages. Uh, but the microwave was nice also. But you do have to trot back and forth. Yes. No, they would, yeah, if you put them all in at one time, I've never tried, maybe you could do, if you did two, then you could have one right away for the back, and then afterwards for the front, but generally they cool off quick, quick enough, we want them hot when we put them on. All right, so we're going to let this continue, and we'll use this on his chest. So, uh, I was asked to use the traditional uh, fomentation and a towel for people who don't have them. So if you were visiting somebody, and you're in North Carolina, and you were there for Christmas or Thanksgiving, and someone gets pretty sick, and you say, oh, I can give you a fomentation, but I don't have my fomentation packs with me. But if you have towels, we can do the treatment anyway. And so then we get 
a whole pile of towels. As you can see, we come well equipped with towels. So we're going to do that now, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the towel, the hot towel, on his back for the one underneath him. Once we do that one, we leave it under there for the whole time. It'll cool off gradually, but he's laying on it. It doesn't cool off quickly. Okay. okay. Gotcha. All right. So I'm taking out the hot fermentation, which was a towel. Yeah. We have a little bit of challenge. I'm going to bring him over here. In that, we did our best to keep the rack off the water, but the rack kind of cheating on me. And most, somehow it always goes down when I didn't want it to. I thought I had it where it couldn't. So I'm going to give it an extra little ringing out here just because I don't want it wet, wet. It's hot, hot. That's good enough. All right. Now we take it over to our wrapper. And as quick as we can get it covered up, that's more heat for the treatment. We get it right there in the middle. I'm done with the gloves because I've got the wrapper now. I put one third over the wrapper. That's wool? This is a wool, a wool blanket. I put the other third back on there. And now we've got one layer here and two layers here, right? Because I've wrapped it the two different directions. We usually, we roll it right up to keep the heat in it. And now I'm going to ask our patient to sit up, and we're going to put it behind his back. Okay. So, I'm going to put this down, but we won't have a lay on it. We're going to have to use some pillows. Not pillows. Some pillows. Put it right down on his waist, and a little bit up here on the pillow. Now, if you're at somebody else's house and you don't have the wool, could you just use a dry towel? You could use towels, yes. Now, I'm going to put two layers because we don't want to burn and it's harder to deal with. So I'm doubling the towel like this. And later, I can pull some of the towel out when the thing cools down some. All right, you can lay down now. Okay. And from now on, I need to be very uh, careful to be checking with him if there's hot spots. You don't want to burn. Hot, it, it won't, generally, it's not like the whole fomentation is way too hot. It'll be pieces of it. Maybe on the shoulder especially, it can be a little bit more tender than say the back. And so if, he's, if he alerts me that he's got a hot spot, I'll have some extra cloths. And rather than having him sit up and, and try to cover the whole thing, which may not be too hot, and he tells me, well, it's just hot under my shoulder, then I'm gonna slip this under there and have that extra layer, and that takes care of it. All right, do you have any hot spots? No, it's fine. Okay, so all right, so far. Yes, After, once I get his chest covered. Yeah, we're only part way into the treatment. Okay, so now we've got the, uh, the microwave sounded. Okay, the microwave is So we've done this one for six We've done this one for six minutes. We put it right out in the middle here of our wrapper. We cover this one layer, we come back to the side, and we roll it up. And I take the towel and I put the towel on his chest because we don't want, again, the same problem, we don't want to burn. And to begin with, I'll go with two layers so that we have that extra protection. And then later we can pull out a piece of that as well. Now we have the top one here. All right, we lay that over him. Sometimes, you know, if the, their arms will get hot, but I, but in this case, it's fine. Uh, I've got it where the foamy's not going that far now. All right, so we've got the feet in hot water, the backs in, with a fomentation, the chest has fomentation. And are you comfortable? You're okay? 
So this is a time that we'll do what? Pray. Pray. Once you got them settled, and they're comfortable, they're sick, this feels good, it's a good time to pray. Anything special to pray about today? Me. You, okay. Get you well. All right, we just finished our prayer. All right, so anyway, so that's how we're doing this. How many minutes do we leave this on? Well, it depends if it gets cold or not. Okay, but between three to six minutes. So I got, yeah. I'm oh, sorry, I noticed you put it over the middle part of his chest. Uh -huh. Do you need to cover the whole thing, or is that just where you want it, just in the middle? Most of the time, that's where you do it. If, if, he is, if he's quite congested um, in his throat and up here, we'd go up a little higher. Now, she talked about using two. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I've worked at Wildwood before. I don't remember ever seeing them do two. They probably have. But generally, one, if, 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 if they're this size of a foamy, they're big enough mm -hmm. to cover the whole chest. And that's what we usually do. And just, you know, you just pull it up higher if, that, if you have the chest congestion. Yeah. And if not, then yeah. you'll just... Well, actually, it's better. You know, the abdomen doesn't need as much as usually we're looking to get the lungs steam and warm. That, that's not, that's just the extra part of the wrapper. Yeah. Okay, so now it'd be time for. Do you have the ice? In the, okay. We're going to go ahead and get some on the forehead. You could use a washcloth. I personally like a hand towel better. It, uh, there's just more of it, and it will stay cool a little longer. I think you should just maybe take <laughs> and I, I have noticed, I don't know why this is exactly, but I've noticed with microwaves, the first time you put that fomentation in there, even if you do it for six minutes, it's not always as hot as I really want it. So I'm, and it's not real hot, is it? No. So I'm going to take this extra layer back. You see how I did that? And I come back again. Now I can increase the heat some in this way. Okay. And then uh, we again keep checking for hot spots, which... There's one on my back and one on the side. Right here. Okay. Yeah. Where my hand is now. A little bit lower. A little lower. Okay. You can see his back is kind of pink. Okay. That's right there. There. So we found a hot spot there. Do you see how I did that? I put the washcloth, and that'll just usually take care of it. But we just check with him again in a couple of minutes, or you know, really 30 seconds. See, did that really get that or not? Yeah, and it just takes care of it right away. Okay. Now, while he's still under that few minutes there, we're going to come down here and we're going to check, let's just check our temperature and see how we're doing. Uh, we've cooled off to, to the 104, 105, so we're okay. We won't add any hot right now. Yeah, no, is that right? Yeah, it's 105. Okay. So that's good. When we do it... You don't want to let that drop below 100. No. In fact, I don't like to go any lower than it is now. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of the hot water... I don't trust this pitcher. The electric pitcher is all hot. Metal and everything. And I, I just don't want to take it, have an accident, so I'd rather use a, use a smaller one normally. And I'm going to put it toward the edge here with me stirring it. Uh, if he's nervous about that, he can take his feet out, but he trusts me. So we're gonna. I'm just going to stir a little bit in, and just to increase the temperature, to increase the quality of the treatment. Is that going to be? Is that okay? Do you notice the temperature going up? Okay. I'm going to guess that when we finish here, we won't be past 110, if that much, but we'll check it now. So here's our reading. We're at 106, so we brought it up just a little bit. So I'm going to do a little bit more. Usually we don't fill the uh, foot bucket up that much that is going to get too full. We could dip some out, but uh, we only start with about a third to half in, in the uh, 
foot basin. And we put the we put a splash pad underneath. So 108.5 is what we're at right now. Okay. Then I can put this back on. Nice and dry. Okay. One more hot fermentation here that we had to be I don't know if you notice steam coming off of it when I put it over here. We're going to, we've gone more than our five, six minutes in order to talk and explain things to you. So we're going to go ahead now and take the sheet back. We're going to take this off. You don't drag it off, you can't take it off kindly, gently, because the way you handle the person also says whether you care or it's just a job. And that there's a certain, you know, a message in it. And we'll then go to the cold friction for a minute. Laurel showed you some nice hand ones you could use, or you could use a washcloth like this. And you can go, you know, if they've gotten really hot, just help them to cool off a little bit. Now it's very important from here, I'm going to use this towel again to get them dry, nice and dry. If you leave him wet and you put the hot back on it, then it steams him, you know, right away. So you want the body to be basically dry. Couple of times here. Now I'm going to use a dry towel. This is a nice, pretty one. I'll put this on him, and I'm going to go ahead and do two layers like I did before, because the fermentation is good and hot. And we're ready to bring it up. I noticed when you did the cold friction rub that it was just a very gentle rub. When I think of a friction rub, I yeah, think I know. I know. more. So I'm I, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm which way does it? I mean, is it okay either way? Or? We're looking. I'm looking for a contrast of temperature. That's it. Yeah, rather than friction. So, and if they're not feeling well, it's just nicer to the lighter. Okay, so there's our other one. So that would be our cycle number two. Uh, no problem on the back. Okay. So we got the back taken care of, the feeder in the hot water, and we're on cycle number two. And then after this uh, three to six minutes, we take that off, wipe them down again, and do one more. We won't do that. We've agreed just to do two so that we can switch and, and not use them all the time. I've changed this by now. They say something was for warming up the muscles for a massage, right? <laughs> there you go. So, Luis is offering to do a massage. <laughs> hey, I got my little roller there. No, it's not okay, man, but we'll get a roller. Okay, so any, any questions now as we've gone this far? You see how it's done? All ready for a test? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead now and uh, we'll go as though this was the third treatment. We're going to go ahead here and remove this fermentation off of him. Lift it off gently. Put it aside. Take our towel off. Come back with the cold. I don't like to wring it out a whole lot, or I don't, it gets warm right away. And we go over him. The cold. Second time. I don't know over there, Chuck. We're just wrapping it up.
Now, if he was home and in bed and sick, we could put the sheet back over. He could lay it just take a nap. Uh, we got to get his feet taken care of, of course. He's not going to be a good nap. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get our water out now. So I pull the sheet back up. I slip off my little protector. And uh, we like the end with cold. So about right there. We do a little cold floor for the feet. And then slip the uh, foot bath out. And the towel. You can put your feet And we put his feet right into the towel. And we got ourselves a on the way to be healed patient. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, Todd. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> you only have to do this one more time. <laughs> I'll let you rest a minute. All right. All right, any questions? Yes. How many treatments do you do per day? Um, well, it depends on how sick they are, but if they have the flu or something like that on a regular, uh, or are cold, they're pretty miserable, at least twice a day. Yeah. I don't know that we do it three times very often, but, uh, or sometimes we do this and then a hot and cold shower uh, cycle. That's an alternative. Yeah. Or a Russian steam bath. Right. Yeah. So we like to have the variety. But it depends, you know, if you're dealing with just the congestion in the chest, the fomentations are excellent. Just let you feel through that. It's pretty warm. I'm not going to have this. I'm just keeping it warm now. Are they actual rice bags like that rice used to be in this? No, I just made made it with little channels like okay. that. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. I thought it was about but it's real rice inside. This is the rice one? This is the rice one. And did you feel how moist it is? It's, it's kind of wet. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the rice on the back. We're going to get the, the uh, foot bath going. This gets so hot that you need, really need to put a towel down. Okay. You see, he's still kind of red from the last one. Taking a nice nap. Okay. Cold water. Okay. Down you go. Is that too hot for you? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, no. Is that good? Yeah. All right. Let's. Okay, so we've got the water. It's supposed to be 104, but he likes it hotter. So he, his wife knows him and says, oh, he'll want hotter than that. So she has uh, Dr. Evans prevails. Okay. Question? Yes. The one with the rice, is it wet also? No. Oh, okay. It's dry. Just moist okay. feet. Okay, so, so we are ready to put the. <laughs> but we are putting it on. And this is not in a regular cover, it's just on towels. Okay, we need uh, another one on his back, he's saying. Okay, up we go. Okay, is that good? Yeah. Better? All right, and then we're going to put cold to the head. And I always put cold to the neck as well. Okay, so the rice bags were heated in the microwave for four minutes. My right kidney is a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, he's saying his right kidney. So, he, uh, on top or bottom? That would be bottom. Okay, so just uh, let's just. Is that going to be enough, yeah. or you want? Okay. okay, then we'll put this around his neck. Okay. Now, we'll make that five minutes. It must be six minutes, and uh, we'll just say it's been one minute off since we've been fiddling around here for a while. Are you comfortable? Okay. So you, you think that rice can never get that hot and hold the heat that well, but it does. It just really holds it well, and it's a very easy way. The best thing is, like, if you're doing it to yourself, that's an easy way. You don't have to do But every time, remember, do your own cold mitten friction between and then put it back on, get another one, put it back on, put it back on, so that you're always staying, staying warm, and you can have, are you okay? Exactly. Yeah. So, and then how long does it last? It lasts a good six minutes. No, no, no. As far as the, the pad itself. I don't know. This is this is a new one for me too. A friend that did it. She's done it for years. Using that. And so she says it's it's a really good way. And she's got all of her rice. She says it's so much easier than the other. So I said. Good enough to teach, we'll try it, so. Are you okay? Okay. So you don't have to tell me that. If you, that's right, if you tuck it in real carefully, you should apply it this way. You can turn over, make sure everything is good. So this is the first time you've used rice? Yesterday was the first time she had this. <laughs> well, I had tried it, but never on a patient, you know, for the whole treatment. Do so. you think you can buy them? Can you double somewhere made out of rice? Or do you have to make them? Well, they, they have different kinds and different sizes, and I don't know if it only has to be rice, or they have to be in some of them. There's some, the, there's some, I mean, long time ago, we even had some, they, they put some spices or something, so it yes. smells pretty. Yes. They, and they, they, and the nice thing about it, at least the one that we used to have, was one that went over your shoulders, so the weight feels good yeah. with the heat. Yeah. Okay. So, it, it's, it's a new way that we're all learning. I love new ways. Yeah. That's why I got so excited when you talked about the psyllium. And it's uh, you use with your charcoal. That's that was a new way to me, so I like it. Okay, so we are going to get ready for the change. Now, do we have to put that one out? Yeah, they're eating it. Do you want me to wrap it in first? No, let's get the things ready. Right there, so we can put them on. Okay, so the question was, should we rub them first and then bring them, or should we bring them and then rub them? And the answer to that is get everything ready so that when you get them, the patient out, do it quickly, put the next one on. So. And then I'm going to do it in the middle of my wrapper. I'm going to bring up one third on this side and one third now, on the other we're side. We're using a combination of this and so that's steamer on the side, I have two layers, and the microwave. If it, last time we had trouble with the micro, uh, the steamer getting it hot enough. I'll let him do the one layer because it hasn't been there for very long since our last treatment. Otherwise, I usually start with the two layers. Does the steamer usually make right, so it wet or will you have to wring it out first? No. But you have to start it with a wet. But if your patient is really ill, you'll have to help with it. Okay. You can go on to the side. Okay, this is the flat oh, one. Yeah. All right. Okay, so this one is ready to go with 
Okay, now you can go ahead and do the uh, the cold mitten friction. Father in heaven, we are so thankful that you have given us simple remedies that we can do. And we just pray that each person here will learn the simple ones and be able to use them with their families or those in need. We thank you that David's willing to go through this twice, and we pray that you'll especially bless him, fill him with your Holy Spirit, and make him one of your vessels, fit for use everywhere. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we are thankful that Dave is willing. Yesterday, Ken got, got cooked twice. Now it's Dave's turn. Are you, does anything need change? Yeah, my back's pretty hot. I started off with a huge stack of towels. You can see that. So it almost seems that maybe the rice gets a little too hot because we have to keep adding the towels for him. This is not. This isn't. That was this rice. is not rice. These are the the, uh, flannel. the flannel ones. My yes. lower left rib is a little hot. Lower rib. Lower left. Lower left rib. I think I brought a lot, right? <laughs> Oh, I see. Okay. Is this hotter than the rice? They're about the same. About the same. About the same. Both of them are flannel now. These are both flannel. The, uh, are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Maybe the ice needs to go up a little bit off my head. My eyeballs are getting cold. Okay. <laughs> well, I won't refresh it. Okay. 
So, now, you're, some of you, you're experienced in this. You've done them a lot. How you have to rack it up? I've done them some, but with my kids, and I didn't have everything I needed. I used some towels. Towels work. Towels work. And like I showed you, you can even, not even sew in that center one and just do a trifold with the towel and it works great. Anybody else have experience? Jeannie, I'm sure you do fomentation. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I do it. I do, do it. Uh, well, sometimes when you go to someone who can't really, who doesn't have all these things, usually we just take a bunch of towels and we uh, boil a lot of hot water. And you kind of like to wash towels, you kind of fold it in three and leave the two sides out, just kind of dump the center, squeeze it out, and then put it on. You, know, you have a towel on here, and you put it on the cover first. Side. And uh, it's all pretty much the same. Yeah. But you know, some people don't have microwaves, some people don't have this equipment, so it's just towels and a well, you know, yesterday I started off saying, don't even do that twisting thing. I said, that's too dangerous. People get burned, you know. And people were saying, no, oh, this is what, the way we do it. Yeah, and so when you go out, sound. yeah, when you, <laughs> when you are out in the bush, like um, Terry Horner's daughter out in Nepal, she, that's all they have yeah. out there. So, uh, People's concerns about COVID. Mm -hmm. It works. It, it does a good job. So it was, all my fears were <laughs> certainly not. You definitely have to be careful because exactly. you're easy to get you hurt yourself with that. Yeah. Yeah. You just uh, you learn how to do it, but. So we're just soft now with microwaves and turkey roasters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boilers on the stove and all that. It just, um, seems like these stay hot, harder, warmer than, than the towel. Longer than the yeah, towel. Yeah, they do. Sure. Um, I just need a microphone. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You know, if you want to try in your, your oven and see if they well, I, the I, I've, I've seen midwives warm the towels in the oven. So. I think that they try it. I mean, the worst thing to do is have the casserole for lunch. We're finishing the treatment here. Oh, I had a question yes. from earlier. You yeah. said contraindications was for cancer and appendicitis. And I wanted to why? Because it, it multiplies the cells too much. I mean, it's just like feeding it? Yeah, it feeds it. I see that with cancer, but why appendicitis? Inflammation. But inflammation, isn't that what we're dealing with anyway? Well, it could burst the appendicitis. Why? I, I don't mean to be facetious. I just like to understand what's going on. Yeah, because uh, it could increase the inflammation. But isn't that, I mean, isn't that what's going on in the lungs that we're dealing with and doing yeah, inflammation? Yeah, but appendicitis is different. It's a, it is a pocket. It's a pocket that right. will burst into the peritoneal space. Right, and I know that it can. It's so basically you appendicitis, you need to have a surgically taken yes, care of. Yes, you don't want to be patient on appendicitis. You have to do a surgical treatment. Oh, but has it been? Well, you know what? Okay. Thanks. <laughs> okay, do we want to do that first? Yeah. Well, he says to. I don't know. That's just a time. I'm sorry. Somebody's just getting a mail on the road. You want to get up? Sure. Okay, you can see he's pretty red. Well, yeah, and they're not going to sew it so that they're going to sew it. But you know what? I'm going to put it here. I don't know what's in them. I've seen them a lot. As a matter of fact, I just saw a bunch of them. I saw all the sheets. I saw them. They're selling right now. Yeah, so this is the, the flannel one, as you can see, it's still hot after 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is the 
It's a flannel one. Fleece is what I was thinking. It's not no, fleece. It's, it's flannel. It's cotton flannel. So like an old bed sheet. You know, you don't want flannel anymore, bed sheet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 Yep. 
Number five, poultices are a seasoning mix that people like to use at Thanksgiving. Cheese. I like charcoal in our turkey. No. No. All right. Uh, Russian steam bath. Uh, Chuck, are you supposed to do this one? Yes. Okay. Hey, Laurel. Yes. Yeah. If you want to use any vitamins or supplements, it's not just medicine, so anything you're taking for supplements. Anything it will absorb. So you, you just need to make sure that you're not. Uh, yeah. Okay, Russian steam bath number one. A Russian steam bath is a heating treatment in which the body is surrounded by moist, warm air while the head is outside of the warm, moist environment. True. 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 Here's a description of how the Russian steam bath works. Which of the following physiological effects are true or false? It produces a generalized heating effect causing profuse sweating. True. 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 Increases the metabolism, pulse rate, and blood pressure. True. 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 Increases the body temperature. True. And how about does it increase the number of circulating white blood cells? Yes. It's a real blessing, isn't it? So that's how, so that's all of those actually turn out to be true. How about that? Yeah, that's great. All right, now here we are. See how well you listen today. Number one, which of the following health issues should chest fomentations not be used? C. C. Brain tumor, cancer, we don't do, okay? Number two, what physiologic effects are not hoped for with a fomentation treatment? Diarrhea. Number D, no, uh, diarrhea. We, we talked about the other ones that were helpful, but not uh, fomentations. Three, it is fine to use fomentations on which of the following conditions? B, B, pneumonia. Okay, which ones? B. Number B is the fine one to use. Cancer, you don't use it on. Appendicitis, you don't use it on. Unconsciousness, you certainly don't use it on. So you are right, B. Number four, it is very good to use extremely hot compresses on paralyzed persons because they are so prone to pneumonia. No. False. Okay. Five, do not apply fomentations if there is bleeding or hemorrhage. True or false? Okay, true. Very good. So, who got 100%? Yay! We, we must have done something right somewhere. <laughs> All right. Is that it? I think so. Okay. So, uh, Sunday is the next time. Sun, next Sunday is the next time at? At 6 o'clock. At the Here, at the church. it's going to be at the church, yeah, okay? Six o'clock at the church, and you don't want to miss, even if you aren't going to get a certificate, because we have one of the finest videos to show you all that are really important to see.